Awesome. Okay, you guys, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce Colorado Martini. Hey Hello, guys. welcome. Hi, guys. Oh, we got to get so centered. <laughs> I, uh, I watch a lot of your stuff, but I, I went through a couple things again today and I literally got goosebumps, but we'll talk about those ones later. <laughs> oh, so well, how was your, how is your huh? day today? How is your day today? Busy, busy, very busy. This is a very busy time of year for me. Um, I actually work at a university. That's my other job besides you two. You got a day job? I have a day About job. Time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so you can imagine this time of year is very busy for us. So it's just, it's, you know, it's it's hard for me to, to, to get everything done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's hard to keep up sometimes. I'm just flipping some comments while we go. So how long? Have you guys had your YouTube channel? Because you're like the top. Okay. What is your top number again in Colorado for YouTube channels? 30. We're, we're one of the top 30 YouTube, Colorado YouTube channels. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, we were very proud of that because uh, the people that are in that 30 were news stations and the Broncos and the Avalanche oh. hockey team. And um, there's some stiff competition. Yeah. There. <laughs> and uh, so we were very honored to get that to be amongst, you know, universities and, and you know, people that, you know, people like that. And so it was, it, we were very thrilled about it. Mm -hmm. That's so awesome. Yeah. It, wow. It is awesome. I know, right? Oh my God. I don't need to highlight those ones, but thank you. <laughs> For anyone that asked, no, I'm not in the ambulance today. I had way too many technical issues, so I'm actually in the living room. So, yeah. Okay. Are you guys on the road some of the time? So, um, what we do is we do a lot of road trips. And road trip. Road trip. <laughs> and, uh, and hopefully it's not as wild as Animal House. Um, <laughs> that was a quote from Animal House. That's why I said that. Anyways, um, so we do a lot of road trips. And we we actually sold our travel trailer recently. Um, so we're, we're, we're in between we're trailers. in between trailers right now. Um, yeah, we're kind of waiting for the COVID thing to, to calm down. Because right now everybody's mm -hmm. getting trailers and RVs and stuff. And Man, they're jacking the price. And they're jacking the price up. So we're just, we're going to kind of wait on it. But we do a lot of uh, travel, especially up and down the Rockies. Um, so we go to Montana and we go to Wyoming and we spend a lot of time in the Black Hills. We love the Black Hills aren't far from us, uh, which is... Um, Hold on, my cord is like moving my camera, my electrical cord. So let me. I, I, what was going on. I kept inch, it kept inching. Well, we were going to start here. talking paranormal here in a minute. Well, and we're going to get to that because oh my goodness, that's where the goosebumps came in. But uh, I've been to Deadwood, but man, I wished I had watched all your videos before I went. Oh, you know, we get a lot of people um, commenting on our on our Black Hills. Deadwood and the other parts of Black Hill videos all the time asking me, you know, where do you, where's your favorite place? What should we do while we're there? I mean, they want me to make a whole itinerary for them because they know <laughs> we spend a lot of time there. We're only five and a half hours away from the Black Hills. Mm. And that's why we go there quite a bit. I mean, we can go there for a three day weekend. That's four and a half if I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> I love the honesty going on here. <laughs> And he's telling the truth too. It's like half the time I'm like, ah! <laughs> so should we give a shout out to that little, just... uh, little town in Wyoming that likes to do the speed traps? Oh, Lusk. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Watch your speed in Lusk. Public service announcement. Yeah. Where was that again? Lusk, Everybody Wyoming. Down. Every sheriff's got a uh, radar. Oh. oh yeah, they have a they have one of those old fashioned speed traps. I was like waiting to be taken to the courthouse afterwards and stuff. <laughs> so yeah, be careful on your way into the Black Hills. There's a lot of speed traps. Usually, I get paid for public service announcements, but this one I had to pay hundred bucks for. <laughs> 
very <laughs> expensive, right? Very <laughs> expensive. Ah, hello, burning up the roads. And we have someone from New Zealand, isn't that? Oh, wow. Wow, that is so great. I know I missed some. Is it like eight in the morning there right now? <laughs> I'm not sure. So fun fact, the Colorado Martini is a drink that blends the traditional sweet and sour heavy agave tequila flavors, <laughs> infused herbaceous. Thanks for using all the big words, buddy. <laughs> Grains of the earth. Oh, you made that up. I did read that whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Where did, you, like, one how of did those. you come up with that name? I was like, there's no Colorado Martini. <laughs> Everyone I make. Robot, Everyone we make. <laughs> there's a Colorado Martini. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's 1 p.m. there. 1 p.m. Oh, okay. Go. Okay. Tomorrow. <laughs> oh. Or was that yesterday? <laughs> no, it's tomorrow. <laughs> so how did you come up with the name Colorado Martini? So we... Um, are, are known amongst our friends for making these flavorful martinis. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wish and, I had to be here to get a settle for this. <laughs> and so our, every time we go to somebody's house or people come over here, you know, people would, uh, instead of, you know, bringing, you know, chips and dip, we were asked to bring our martinis. <laughs> and and so, you know, we just got to a point where we were like bringing a suitcase with a roll, a rolling suitcase. Portable with a, bartender. A portable yeah. bar. Oh, you're my it's kind Jane of people. To people's <laughs> houses. And so, you know, we, we had quite, after a while, we had quite a few recipes. And so I said to Patrick, by the way, this is Patrick, I'm Denise. <laughs> um, you know, let's write a book. And, um, and let's call it Colorado Martini. And so we, we wrote the book and we were about ready to put it out. Um, you know, I just needed to do the editing and stuff. And I, at the same time, started YouTube in like 2018. And I actually, I actually started the channel as an organic gardening channel of all things. Really? <laughs> I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I just knew I needed to start. And, um, and this was right after they changed the rulings on getting monetized where you had to have uh, 4,000 hours, a thousand subs. And so it was, it was kind of a wild time because a lot of people uh, got demonetized um, in, in, that, in that late January of 2018. Um, okay. They had been monetized for a long time and all of a sudden they were demonetized. And, um, um, you know, and that it was a, the, the, the bar was a lot higher to get monetized. And when we all found out that we had to be monetized, we had to get our 4,000 hours in 365 days. Mm -hmm. So since we were kind of the first kids on the block with this, nobody really knew what that meant. We didn't know, did that mean within a, you know, a, a 365 rolling 365 or if we're not monetized in 365 days, you're done. Nobody really, they didn't have anything out there that really explained it to us all. It's so we rolling, all right? Like, huh? It's rolling, right? Rolling. Okay. But none of us could figure that out back then. So a lot of us bound together um, as creators and, um, you know, and really tried to help one another grow kind of like, you know, what, a lot of the RV communities doing and, yeah. and other people, but we were uh, the uh, I am creator movement. And um, you know, so when I got, I, so I got really involved with other channels and, you know, really, we really had built a, a strong community and a lot of us are still friends to this day. We're very close friends. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, meeting other people and seeing other people's channels, I realized this is, I don't want to do organic gardening. I just, I, you know, I, as I learned, I realized it's not what I want to do and it's not how I wanted to grow. So I started doing cooking and health and just kind of trying to figure out what we, I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So then I brought, we wanted to launch our book and um, I, so I brought Patrick in for lives and we started doing these lives called cocktail time on Saturday nights. And we, and we basically made two of our recipes 
Um, and we talked about and got drunk. It's kind of like a virtual party before virtual parties were hip. They were a lot of fun. And so a lot of the I am creator community was always in our lives and stuff. And, and um, we, there was, we always told the history of what we were doing. So we would talk about the history of, of, you know, the liquor that we were working with or the, the cocktail we were making. So if we were making a Moscow mule, we talk about where Moscow mules came from and how they were invented and why you use a copper cup. And um, so we were educating people about the history. Um, you know, that was kind of our spin with the whole thing. We love history yeah, we love and alcohol. So we're basically putting the two together. <laughs> Yeah, That's there awesome. was some pretty, there were some pretty funny, uh, pretty funny nights. <laughs> I think my favorite. Yeah, the founding fathers was a good one. That was and my favorite. The founding all. fathers were a bunch of drunks and potheads. Yeah, um, we did it. That was back in July of 2018. It's still up. Mm -hmm. it, um, it's funny. It's our most popular blog post on our website um, founding about the founding fathers. fathers, what druggies and alcoholics they were, and that was the whole live. And I said potheads. Potheads, they were potheads too. Well, they all had to grow hemp, you know, it was the yeah. law then. And they had yeah. to grow it? Yeah, all 13 colonies had to grow it for the Navy. They used to make the sails and riggings from hemp. Yeah, it was all made out of hemp. All rope was made out of hemp. Yeah. And so oh. our founding fathers had acres and acres of weed growing out back. Weed growing. Yeah. <laughs> And ben Franklin was was told to be, to really get the good shit. He'd bring it back from Paris. So China, yeah. it was China. He got around. He went to Paris, and Paris mm. told him to go to China oh, to get the good stuff. Yeah. And so that was our whole point. Going, yeah, they want the good stuff for rope. Uh huh. <laughs> oh yeah, right. <laughs> When I die, the shit will roll out my ear for several well, days. Pot's legal in Colorado, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Yeah, it is state? indoors. You can't you can't grow marijuana outdoors legally um, unless it's in like a lot greenhouse. Uh huh. But uh, you can grow. Uh, I guess there's limits on it. I don't know too much about that. We just call it the secret garden, and nobody talks about it. <laughs> oh my goodness. So anyway, so the Founding Fathers was like our most popular live, and and again, it's still it's funny. I look at the stats of our blog, and it's always like the top viewed blog about the, the Founding Fathers and and their drugs and alcohol and stuff, and. Uh, uh, so that was a fun one. And then we, we kind of stopped after that one. You know, I think we did a couple more after that. We did a couple with Pusa Studios. Well, yeah, I had to get a new liver after that. We just stopped doing them because it just was really time consuming to gather all the information and stuff. And, you know, and I wanted to focus more on our videos and, mm -hmm. um, so now that same history and information goes into our videos. Right. So. Right. And so that's where the history comes from that we have in all our videos is, you yeah, know, American those, history is a beautiful thing. It really is a lot of cool stuff out there. You know, my sisters are always going, Oh, you should go to Italy. You should, you know, go to France. And I was like, why we have they're beautiful places. And I really would like to go, but there's so many things in this, you know, in this continent, that I want to see that, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I, that why do I have to go across to Europe to see wonderful things? We have such beautiful natural wonders up and down North America and it's in our car right away. I'll, I'll, be, on, I'll be honest with you. I used to fall asleep during world history. I thought it was the most boring shit. How unqualified does a person have to be to be an aristocrat? I mean, where do you get that job? <laughs> I've been sending out my resume for years. I'm holding out right now for an aristocrat position. I'm one. 
<laughs> it's really sickening. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it bored the shit out of me. <laughs> American history, on the other fact, hey, we were the rebels. We kicked ass. That's why it's so interesting. <laughs> we're, you know, the, the, the United States were rebels. Yeah. And, you know, the Wild West... And there's just so much just great, interesting history just here in North America, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and if you, you know, looking for other cultures, go south into Mexico. You know, you get the Mayans and the Aztecs. Oh, you, I noticed you didn't say north into Canada. I have. I'm going to. You interrupted me. <laughs> <laughs> Damn loyalist. <laughs> well, Mexico, you can go any time of year. Canada, you don't want to go in the winter unless you really like snow. But you can hit the months yeah. as bad, well, like November or March. That train that goes from Calgary into BC is just absolutely marvelous. And I've been wanting to take him on that for the longest time. I'd love to do a video on that. Well, I went to yeah. Calgary. I went to the Calgary Olympics. I'm dating myself. Uh, 88. 88. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I just felt, and it was actually, it, it was really warm uh, in those Olympics in Calgary. And mm -hmm. they had to like move. That's the year that the Jamaicans had a bobsled team. <laughs> they, brought the, they brought the heat. They still have that bobsled at Canadian Olympic Park. <laughs> and I, and it, they were the talk of the Olympics, you know, mm -hmm. and they and I had tickets to to, to go to to see the bobs see them on that, and because it was so warm, I mean, unseasonably warm, there was no snow. They had to make snow. There was a stitch of snow in the whole town of Calgary, and and up in the uh, ski slopes there wasn't much, so they had to move the time of the bobsled to the early morning because. The, what they would make and freeze was melting by the time yeah. it was supposed to happen. So I didn't, I couldn't go. I had tickets to this other event at that time. Mm -hmm. And awesome. I was sure it wasn't a bad hangover. <laughs> Probably. You're not really a morning person. You know? <laughs> that was back when she was experimenting with the martinis. <laughs> Did I mean, you? I think it was, you know, that was right at the fall of the Soviet Union and all the Russian athletes were. I think she was out partying with the Russians that night. <laughs> Oh, it was lots of vodka, was it? <laughs> it was so funny. The uh, well, the wall had just fallen. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, it had just fallen, and um, we were in a bus. You know, we were we had a bus take us everywhere, and uh, these guys were walking on the side of the road, and they had Russian, you know, the sickle. What's they had the Russian symbol? athletes' <laughs> jackets, so. the USSR symbol yeah. on their jackets, and this was like the first time that you could actually talk to somebody from from the USSR, you know, in my generation. So we're like, stop the bus! You know, we're all drunk. <laughs> and we're all, you know, there's Ruskies, let's stop! You know? <laughs> we're taking what, what was a 1988 version of selfies with a bunch of Russians, you know? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Yeah, and didn't they turn out to be from like Jersey or something? Yeah, they bought the jackets and they totally were fooling us that they were from the USSR. Oh no! Oh no! I hope you didn't give anything up for that. I was still, I was married. <laughs> okay, you look younger than I thought. We've been married for 33 years. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Why is there the awkward silence? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's great that you guys have been together that many years. And your YouTube channel it's the martini. traveling and <laughs> just stay drunk. <laughs> yeah, we just stayed drunk for 33 years. <laughs> well, you must be good drunks. Happy I'm drunk. for donor livers at this point. <laughs> that's, that's why we're here tonight. I'll flash it. Yeah, I'll livers. flash a number up momentarily. <laughs> I'm A positive. <laughs> You're crazy. Oh my gosh, I love it. So you changed the YouTube channel from basically like gardening-ish, but and then over to the martinis and then to travel with historical elements. So we like to say that we do historical travel where we find legends and lore and the his 
history of a place. Um, that's where a lot of the paranormal stuff comes in. That's just because she wouldn't let me call it Gulliver's, Gulliver's Adventures. Um, <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, and so, so we decided to do the travel because we were doing a ton of road trips, anyways. And so, you know, I um, I just snorted. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was the dog growling over there. I know, Captain Jack. He always cracks me up. <laughs> um. So we were already doing road trips and, you know, the kids were, were older now and we're not going on the road trips with us. Um, and um, so we just decided, let's, you know, let's start filming our road trips. And, you know, so we're not really doing anything different than we haven't been doing for years and years and years. You know? Except you spend more time behind the camera. Yeah, exactly. It's like, do that again. Yeah. <laughs> the, right here, I need to shoot that sign. <laughs> the quality of your videos are amazing. It's like I'm watching yeah. on TV. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. So no, much. it's so true. I'm not even trying to be nice. I'm just like, gosh, this is incredible. It's probably some of the best stuff I've ever seen done on YouTube. Oh, wow. Thanks. <laughs> It, ha it, 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 it helps that she's a computer programmer and knows programs and uh, yeah, I'm a software engineer. is able to put that stuff together. So, oh. so, any so anyways, that's where the history comes from. And then the paranormal, got hair in my mouth. <laughs> if you're going to all these old towns, you may as well look and see if the ghosts are around. Exactly. Maybe. Well, the paranormal started about uh, right after we started doing the travel. Mm -hmm. So it was still 2018 and it was about this time of year. And I decided for the Halloween month that I would do a couple of like historical ghost stories, like, you know, why this place is haunted and what the story, the backstory is with it and stuff. So, um, of course, being here in Colorado and only being 30 minutes from the shining hotel and which is the Stanley hotel up in Estes park, uh, I had to start with that. So, um, so we did a complete story on um, The Shining um, and how Stephen King came up with the story from the hotel. Um, oh. so, and yeah, the, the Shining Hotel is uh, the Stanley in Estes Park, Colorado. Um, it's right next to Rocky Mountain uh, National Park. It's this beautiful hotel um, in the mountains. And uh, he lived here in Boulder for a while, and that's why he was up there. And um, we actually knew a lot of backstory about where he came up with the story and the, the real story, not something you read on at the Internet, because mm -hmm. uh, he, when he uh, released the book Dr. Sleep, which is the sequel to The Shining, he came here to Boulder to uh, release the book. So the night it released, he was here and he spoke. And so, I got a signed copy. So we got a signed copy and everything. So he, that is so cool. So he told the story, the real story, straight from the, you know, his mouth, his potty mouth. Oh, really? <laughs> Excessive use of the F word. Oh, oh man. I was a little no taken. Idea. I would think someone who had mastered uh, the English language oh. and literacy would clean up his speech a little <laughs> yeah he's got quite the he was dropping the f-bombs yeah <laughs> oh wow the things i didn't know yeah kind of Somebody surprising asked, especially at a formal been... event yeah his band's <laughs> not very good either but i enjoy his writings <laughs> he, what? I'm, sorry, it it's grave. I'm sorry pardon me not holiday's grave is that that's in colorado Doc Holiday's grave, yes. Yeah, it's in Glenwood Springs, Colorado. Um, Doc Doc Holiday is buried in Glen, Glenwood Springs, up on a hill. Um, he came. Glenwood Springs was always was known for its vapor caves. So the hot springs are, are it's known for its hot springs there, and so they have these vapor caves, or it's an actual cave where there's these vapors that come out that are supposed to be really good for you. Well, back in the TV days in the late 1800s, a lot of people went there for that. And he was one of them. So, yeah. so after the OK Corral, um, he and and um, uh, Wyatt Earp's um, 
with their with their own ways because they got in a big fight after the whole mm -hmm. thing. And um, and so he started coming north. He started coming into Colorado after that. And so he was, they think he was with uh, Big Nose Kate. They're not sure. Um, but sh there's no mention of her whatsoever after the after Tombstone. And so they're not really sure what happened to Big Nose Kate. Although she, she I know where she's buried. She's in uh, Prescott. You know where everyone's buried. I know where everybody's buried. <laughs> buried in Prescott. Um, Prescott for you that don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> Prescott, Arizona. It's actually Prescott. Um, only if you're a cowboy. Only if you, you know, live there. It's actually somebody's last name. Anyways, um, she's buried there, and that's the only thing. They don't know what happened to her between Tombstone and Prescott. So anyway, so Doc Holiday, after he and Wyatt Earp separated, Wyatt's buried in Northern California in Coloma Cemetery in the Bay Area. Um, he came up here to Colorado. And he spent some time in Leadville um, as a, uh, a dealer for a while. What and, was he dealing? Um, what did they play? Feral? Feral? Yeah, maybe. It was Feral. Um, and so he spent some time there. And then he just got sicker and sicker and sicker. And he, he after that, he did meet up with Wyatt Earp. Um, and they made up. But they, it was never the same. Mm -hmm. So they parted ways again. And uh, he just got sicker and sicker. So he ended up in Glenwood Springs because of the vapor caves, um, hoping that that would help him. In the hot springs. In the hot springs. Also, oh. The hot springs there are awesome. Yeah, they're really so, awesome. Yeah. Vapor caves are probably bad for your health. <laughs> they're probably you breathing. <laughs> 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 it's just bubbling up in the air. You really don't want to be snorting it. You know? Exactly. Um, but yeah, you know, at the at the end of all those westerns, like the end of Tombstone, where Wyatt walks into the sanitarium mm -hmm. and uh, old Doc Holliday's laid up with his boots off. Well, that's Glenwood Springs. That's where he passed away. But he actually passed away at the Glenwood Springs Hotel. It was at the Glenwood Springs Hotel. At it the was time. the Glenwood Springs Hotel, and not Wyatt not the one that's currently called the Glenwood Springs Hotel, but the old one downtown. Right, it's a department store now. It uh, it burnt down. Um, and, and so the original hotel's not there, and Wyatt was not there. They, they yeah. Now they drug him up the hill in the pouring rain and forgot where they buried him later. So, so Doc <laughs> was so poor at this point. He had yeah. no money. There was no friends with him. There was nobody. But his he had his reputation. Everybody knew who he was. But by this time, it was like the eighteen eighty three or something like that. The Okay, Krause story had already made it across the United States with the dime store, uh, you know, novels, and um, so he was already famous. And but he had no money, so they put him up in this hotel uh, to die. And just recently, a picture um, showed up that they think is him in his dying days. Um, really? he's got like, like this band around his throat, and he's very thin and, and drawn. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it, it most it does really look like him, and so they're still going through an authentication process to to prove this was him. Um, but his last days, he couldn't talk, and um, and so when he passed, there was no money, and so the townspeople of Glenwood Springs uh, put up a collection to to bury him. And they either forgot yeah. where they buried him, or they don't want to say where they buried him because of fortune seekers. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at poor Billy the Kid's grave. <laughs> poor Billy the Kid, uh, Kid's gravestone has been stolen so many times that they had to put iron around it and bolt it to the ground with locks. So the really? first thing I didn't know that that was stolen in the fifties, and it showed up twenty five years later in a farm field. <laughs> <laughs> Damn plow keeps hitting something. <coughs> oh hell, they moved well, down their inheritance. <laughs> and then the second time, some truck. It's out in the middle of nowhere. The the graveyard. Fort Sumner. Fort Sumner, and um, so the town of Fort Sumner is a good ten miles away, but it's at the old Fort Sumner, the actual where the yeah, fort it, was, it was an army fort. At it one was point. an army fort, and so. Um, it's out in the middle of nowhere, so you could be out there and taking Billy the Kid's headstone, and nobody would you nobody would see you. And so, yeah, see him backing up the record. You didn't hear that, back. You didn't hear that from me. <laughs> <laughs> so some truck driver from California took it the second time, 
from Huntington Beach and then boasted about it. This is like, like oh, hell, he had it in his living room. Had it in his house and was boasting about it. So somebody turned him in. <laughs> so now it's like barred down. It's in a cage. <laughs> it's like, didn't you have the ability to get? Can't tell with all the iron on it. Yeah, I gotta get your telephone on my doctor. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah so, no kidding. These gravestones been stolen like three times. <laughs> So, because you know all this history and you know about the graveyards, like I watched your Cheeseman Park and I was just astonished. <laughs> that video. But if some of that would lead you into the paranormal stuff, and I still don't know what a spirit box actually is, like, but can you explain how you got into the paranormal? So, after we I did the, the Shining story, and our viewers were like, more, I, we want more. That's, we want more stories. So our, my second story was Cheeseman Park, which is this horrific story. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and uh, they just ate it up. And next thing I know, we were buying equipment, and <laughs> going out doing investigations. And we have always been into the paranormal. It's it's okay. always been something we've been into. Kind of been That's haunted we, by it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've used that line a few times, haven't you? <laughs> No, I just make shit up as we go. You can see it in my face when we're filming. It's like, shut up and leave me alone. I <laughs> just be off guard all the time. So I started putting the funny stuff as like our first clip. I was putting him at the end. And now I'm putting him in the beginning because he just like, he comes up with shit. It's like, where does he come up with this? And it just, I like start laughing so hard. I go out of frame. <laughs> just like <laughs> so get back to your story about paranormal all right <laughs> <laughs> yeah so then we, we were always going to haunted hotels and she's been parks awesome though. we've always been into haunted hotels so we started telling the story going to haunted hotels and actually doing investigations and then we discovered that uh uh you know they like to talk to me <laughs> She's a lot prettier. <laughs> well, she I wouldn't want to talk to me either. It's like, hey, the creepy old man in the corner. Eh. <laughs> I mean, he leaves me in places by myself, and I'm like, you know, I'm talking to a ghost. <laughs> it's, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, it's kind of freaky. <laughs> most of the time, most of the time, I don't get interaction. So, uh, what was that? What What did you feel or hear? Like, what was your experience when they were communicating? Um, well, it, th there's been different forms of communication, um, you know, whether it's on the spirit box. And if you guys don't know what a spirit box is, it's um, it's radio frequency that goes back and forth between the band. So when you can do FM or you can do AM and it actually goes, it's backwards. It scans all the frequencies at a high rate, creating a white noise, which is believed to be manipulated by spirits. So you'll get words uh, out of the blue one. I heard the one that was named James. I was like, holy, <laughs> oh, goosebumps. Yeah, that was in our room. Three times it told me its name was James. <laughs> so <laughs> you guys got to check out their channel if you haven't. <laughs> holy moly. Well, what, the funny thing about that story is when we went to the hotel, there's all this uh, urban lore. We're talking about the pla uh, the Plains Hotel the Plains in Hotel. Cheyenne, Wyoming. There's all this okay. lore. Oh, well, this ghost haunts this room, and that ghost haunts this room. And it's like, well, let's see what ghost is in our room. And lo and behold, we found James. So. <laughs> yeah, James was is not was there was no claims about James. The room had no claims, and um, we actually get stuff in the middle of the day. We don't have to wait until three o'clock in the morning. Um, we get stuff all the time. And so we decided to fire up the, you know, the spirit box. And we're like, you know, what is your name? James, as clear <laughs> as day. And we asked him several times, actually over a couple of days. And every time it was James. And what I think what has freaked, what freaked me out the most, what freaks us out the most is when they say our name. <laughs> I even bought him a t-shirt. You'll see him wear it quite a bit in a lot of our videos where it says, you know, you've made it in ghost hunting when a ghost calls you by name. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they'll get a little, they'll get a little 
fixed on one person. And uh, yeah, they do. They get fixed on one person. But that in that ho in that room, James, we Pat would go, "What's my name?" And he wasn't saying anything. And so I said, "What? What's my name?" As clear as day, he says, "Nini." Well, Nini's my nickname, and it's what my family calls me. And I was like. Did he just say Nini? Well, I also <laughs> call her that, so he might have heard me say that when we were in the room. <sighs> and you guys are staying in these rooms. Aren't you ever afraid? The dad's not going to hurt you. It's the living you need to worry about. <laughs> you know, the more and more, when we first started doing it, it was freaking me out because they were talking to me. Mm -hmm. And especially at the time when we were in Lincoln, uh, New Mexico, where, you know, Billy the Kid. Yeah, Billy the Kid's gang, uh, well, the Murphy's gang kind of like me, so they wanted to chat with her. <laughs> yeah, well, this is where the Lincoln County Wars happened, was in Lincoln. Uh, there's an actually a town Lincoln, there. New Mexico. And the whole town's a historical park. Yeah, so the Murphy store, everything's still standing there. If you were a Billy the Kid fan or watched any of those Young Gun movies when you were younger, uh, all that shit's still there. It's the whole there. town's a national really? uh, monument. You know, so, so we were there to film for... Um, the history of everything. And I haven't even put out the footage yet of all the stuff we found, but we decided to pull out the K2 meter, which is this meter that um, it, it lights up. It's, it's thought it, that uh, if a spirit goes near it, it lights the lights up. It basically reads electrical fields. So, well, there's different colored lights on it. Like I was watching uh -huh. one light, like it was like a yellow light. Just the strongest of the signal. So, so it okay. goes to red. Yeah. So it, it the, the lights are telling you the strength of the signal or the electrical field. And if you're in an area where there is no electrical, you know, if you're in a 16th century fort and there's no power, running water, or anything else, you literally should not even get a bleep on it. Mm -hmm. Now, what we've also found in our, our uh, adventures is that in areas where there's no power, the mm -hmm. ghost or spirits actually have difficulty talking to you because we believe there's no energy to draw from. So if there's no energy around, if you're in the middle of a field, <laughs> the, the, the spirit has to have energy to draw to make the electrical field that makes your meter go off. So they usually will suck it from your camera batteries, your phone batteries, uh, anything they can attach on to, to draw energy to, Try to communicate, including people, including people. And it's happened to me a uh, couple of times. A lot of people get literally get drained yeah. uh, when they're out doing paranormal investigations. When we go on a paranormal investigation, I'm down for about 48 hours afterwards. And it's not we don't really go out late. So it's not from staying up late. I am drained. From it sucks the life kind of of I mean, she doesn't have to wear uh, aluminum foil antenna <laughs> helmets or anything. They just, no. <laughs> um, they, they, you know, this is uh, some real shit here. You know, I, I get comments all the time on our paranormal stuff. Oh, I, you know, they're being nice. You know, I, I really like your channel, but I really don't believe. Mm -hmm. And it's, and that's fine if people don't believe. I, I, you know, that's fine. But you, it's because you haven't had an experience. And once you have an experience that you can't explain, I mean, a really bona fide experience, not the lights flickering, not an orb in a picture. You've had an experience and you saw something you can't explain or you just can't explain some device or, or it's calling you out by name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, disembodied no, disembodied just voices. A little bit. Are you running low on battery? Your, your picture just dimmed a little. I better plug that stuff back in. Just because I don't want to lose you, my. Can you know, you I've that? heard, and I I know some family members that I know they they under they learn things through dreams, and things mm -hmm. are that way. But yours are all awake, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, well, like at Cheeseman Park. Um, she, well, let me finish the the one about Lincoln real quick. There's this turret that's there that the Spanish built that the whole town would get in this this big turret, and it has like gun slits in it to protect okay. themselves when the Apache would attack. <laughs> so when it became a, a United States territory um, and became Lincoln, uh, the turret's still there to this day. Yeah, it's still there. And so they fought the Lincoln County Wars 
full-on gun battles in the street between Billy the Kid's regulators and, Murph and the Murphy gang. And so the Murphy gang held up inside this turret during this Lincoln County War with Billy the Kid. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of people died that day. And they held up in here. And so we went inside the turret <laughs> and, yeah, and we decided to pull out, you know, the K2 meter and we weren't getting anything. I mean, there's no power, you know, in there whatsoever. And you always mm -hmm. put your phone in, in, in um, airplane mode. So you're, because if somebody texts you, it will make the K2 yeah, go and, off. and live streams kill your evidence. They kill so your evidence. If you've got an investigation and the guy's going through live streaming, every instrument's going to be interfered with. Even if they're across the room, you and know, it I just, see those, I say they're entertaining, but you kind of got to shake your head. So, um, so anyway, so we weren't getting anything, like nothing. And mm -hmm. um, he left the turret, left me in there by myself, which was like really funny. Oh, and I <laughs> shut the door. And he shut the door. And was like, <laughs> this is like really old. Yeah, the door, the door is two feet thick. Yeah, the door is, the door is this really thick door. And it's really old. That You have to kind of go bend down to get in it. I mean, this thing's ancient. Yeah, and it's three <laughs> tiers high, too, which is kind of cool. So you can put the sharpshooters up in the tower. And the only light that comes in are the slits where you put your gun through, you know. So I'm in there all by myself. And next thing I knew... You know, I'm like, is there anybody here that would like to talk to me? You know, and the thing goes off <laughs> and and you start getting these intelligent response that it only goes off when you ask, ask it a direct question. And so that was like the first time I was really by myself and I was freaked out out. You don't hear it in my voice on the video, but I'm in there just going, Pat, Pat. <laughs> goodness oh my goodness oh it was it freaked me out because it was the first time i had actually really communicated with a ghost alone alone and, or just period yeah because she's a pretty good sport about it i mean you know <laughs> well at the abbey we just with 303 paranormal we went to this abbey that's um they're uh 303 paranormal or youtubers also um and we do a lot of um collab investigations with them and mm -hmm. um we all went down to this huge abbey down in Cannon City. And so it's, it's um, you know, it's privately owned now. And so we're in the priest's, the head priest's um, room. Bedroom. Bedroom. <laughs> and they make me lay on the bed. We figured, hey, a woman had never been in that bed, right? <laughs> that was the trigger object. <laughs> <laughs> that video is coming. That video is coming out in uh, October. <laughs> I haven't put that video out yet, but yeah, they, they, I have video of me on the bed. Yeah, he didn't like it. The K two kept going the, off. <laughs> yeah, the story behind the monastery is pretty dark too. There was a a, a school there for uh, for children, boys. young boys. And uh, one of the priests ended up committing suicide for child molestation charges. And he's buried on the, he committed suicide at the Abbey and he's buried in the cemetery behind it. Yeah. So it, it's got a dark kind of creepy theme to it. We spent the night there. It was a blast. Yeah. But We're the only time I was really afraid was when I went back to the cooler and there was no more beer. <laughs> it was horrible. And, and they said they weren't going to get any more. <laughs> so my question is how does someone get started in ghost hunting like it's only if they actually speak to you or like let's say i've never had any kind of connection out here that i'm aware of uh -huh. like, what would i do like you guys use a lot of different equipment and and that's me because i I'm a scientist by trade. And science. Science. And I, I need to prove this to me, myself. And mm -hmm. to me, proving something is through equipment. It's a part of my training as a geophysicist. And so um, I, you know, I'm all about the equipment. And I, you know, I'm not about the orbs and pictures and, um, uh, and you know, if I if I get something on film, wonderful. If I got, but I never have. 
Um, but it, I, the, with the instruments, there's a lot of things we've come across that I can't explain as a scientist because I'm like, there's no energy here that would cause such a thing. And that you're getting intelligent responses. And so basically how we got started, well, we had we, we were believers. Uh, and that's the thing is that I wasn't 100% a believer. I kind of, I've had experiences that I kind of had to prove it to myself. Not me. I see dead people. <laughs> They're everywhere. That's you and me, honey. Yeah, <laughs> a movie I once watched. So we just, the first thing we got was a K2 meter because they're cheap. They're only 50 bucks. You can get them on in Amazon. And, and a, a K2 meter. That's, that's the electronic device. I was telling you it picks up the um, electrical signals. It's the one with okay. the lights that go on. I mean, if you took it up to a power box, it'd go crazy. Yeah, and, and we use it a lot too to, to debunk stuff um, because I I build buildings and I can go through buildings and go yeah there's a power box there yeah there's the elevators power yeah and we kind of rule out hot spots and if you find a good dead area you can actually do a decent investigation uh, you definitely don't want to do your investigation in the electrical room of the basement um, yeah right you're not going to get any true readings. <coughs> I saw a comment pop up a minute ago about a jackery. Um, it said that you so can they can get power. It. Yeah, to get power from uh, ghost generators. There's there's certain three ones out three there. paranormal uses that. Yeah, you have to be careful. I mean, they're great for generating power, but they also can interfere with your electronical devices because you're generating electricity. Uh, everything from your REM pod, your K2, it can have effects on it. So. Uh, they are great for, for generating energy, though. Yeah, I it, um, Aunt Drew from 303 Paranormal brought it to the Abbey, and he was using it a lot. And I I don't like it. I For one thing, it it, it has this hum that's kind of annoying. And it does? I can't hear <laughs> you it. You can't shit. hear it, I think. <laughs> Ghosts have to talk loud to <laughs> me. just reminded me what you did. So, John, we're at the Abbey. We're in this upstairs. It, this place hasn't been inhabited in the longest time, so it's real eerie. It's pitch dark. And Drew from 303 Paranormal is talking to the spirit box. You know, you only have one person asking questions. And so so John from 303 Paranormal and me, or we're le he's leaning against one side of the hallway, and I'm leaning on the other, and we're filming. Patrick goes off somewhere in the dark, you know, I, you can't see anything unless you can see I, it through your I found ear. where the little boys used the bathroom. It was funny. It was little bitty toilets and everything. Yes, yeah, so it used to be the dorm. And all of a sudden we hear Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. <laughs> we start laughing because we Hey, I figured what the hell, you know? <laughs> if she, if Bloody Mary is going to show up anywhere. Why wouldn't it be a haunted monastery? So we go running to the bathroom, and he's standing in front of the mirror, going "Bloody Mary!" Bloody <laughs> <laughs> I remember doing that as a kid. Chicken show, chicken shit. <laughs> he does stuff like that. You know, you, bring, you know, you're it's like pitch dark and it's quiet. You're kind of scared. All of a sudden, he does something funny, and you're like. <laughs> Well, I love asking the funny questions. You know, we'll be in a really serious investigation. And are you a boy? Are you a girl? Did you live here? Do you know you've passed? And I'm like, do you miss your puppy? If I had passed, I'd miss my damn puppy. You know, I'm just trying to get a response. <laughs> But, you know, I, I, the one thing I have gotten that was not from, uh, well, it was from instruments, instruments, but it's not. We were at the um, Plaza Hotel in Las Vegas, New Mexico. Not to be confused with Las Vegas, Nevada. Nevada. <laughs> um, and this place is mega haunted. It's a beautiful hotel. I, I love staying there. It's the nicest hotel. Oh, it's mega haunted. See, yeah, I miss my puppy too. Sorry. <laughs> And a lot of stars have been, you know, um, stayed there and stuff. And so they have pictures of the stars up on the, the rooms of the room they stayed in. So like Long when well, they filmed Longmire in Las Vegas. Oh, they filmed so many Westerns in Las Vegas, New Mexico. And, it's not even funny. And so I'm going to each room because I'm making a normal travel video, not a paranormal <laughs> one. <laughs> and I'm going to each room saying, oh, so-and-so stayed here. So-and-so stayed here. So I get to the John Carpenter room 
and I filming and I'm and I'm showing the picture of the room and the, the what room it is. And I'm just saying, oh, and John Carpenter stayed here. And I go on to the next. Well, that evening I sat down to review. My, I always review my footage all the time. Yeah. And when I said, this is the John Carpenter room, something goes, hello. <laughs> there was nobody in that hallway. Nobody but me. And right into the camera. Hello. <laughs> and oh, I was like, <laughs> that's I do. Where'd that come from? I, didn't, I took my, threw my earphones off. I was like, how can I hear this? I wasn't expecting it at all. So next Wait. thing I knew, we're doing a paranormal investigation. Yeah. <laughs> Great talent. Yeah, I, you know, I think we got kind of sidetracked. I want to make sure we answered your question. So uh, you were asking the best way to, to, if you're a beginner, to start paranormal. Mm -hmm. um, I would say uh, join an organized group or like a uh, organized ghost hunt, uh, maybe in your local town where you go with people who've done it before and, and just kind of get the feel for it. Um, you may even start out with uh, what they call those things. I call them divining rods. They are but, divining rods. Yeah. Uh, but go with somebody, even a fellow YouTuber, you know, find yourself in Colorado, pull up. Look us up. We'll scare the shit out of you. <laughs> well, you know, I was thinking, I drive an ambulance. I converted an ambulance. Uh, I used to drive a hearse. Do I want to know? Said, do I want to know? You what? Like, do I want to know what's going on in there? Or should no, I? You, never investigate your own home. Yeah. <laughs> You don't want to stir shit up. And you don't want to know. That's our Otherwise, no you won't sleep well at night. Yeah, that's our number one rule. Never investigate the house. Yeah, we won't even test our equipment in our own house. Mm -hmm. so, really? Yeah. yeah. We don't want to know. Don't want to know. <laughs> we don't well, want to know. We definitely don't want to know about an ambulance. Yeah, we don't do graveyards either. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we do graveyards, but we don't do investigations. Or, uh, we both find it kind of... Uh, Tasteless or uh, disrespectful. Yeah, disrespectful. It occasionally depends on what it is. Yeah. But I mean, if there's a criminal under there, what the hell? But yeah, where <laughs> it, I, I, there's just something that just doesn't seem right to us, and it, it's I, I don't feel comfortable doing it, and it's, it has yeah. nothing yeah. to do with their spirits there. It to me, it just I I just don't feel comfortable as a person. Yeah, hence, <laughs> doing words, rest in peace. Yeah. Right? I, but, I, yeah, just, I was just thinking that uh, I just, and I don't, I, I don't disrespect people who do do it. It's yeah. just, it's just not it's something not bag, we, we choose not to do. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but yeah, if you find a group, there's a, there is a organization called ghost hunts, USA.com and they do organized ghost hunts and you can get into some and they're all over the nation. You can get into some cool places. And you can get in some guys. places like pen, old penitentiaries and um you know places in Gettysburg and stuff and you know there's like maybe 30 other people but they go to such big places that you really don't fall over each other and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um so um I see the question if you ever Well they like to grab my ass, you know, anytime we're in a dark uh, they like, they really like to grab my ass. I'm um, insulted. <laughs> she grabbed um, my ass. <laughs> yes, I have had some. I've I've actually had it. Um, I've had a, a spirit attached to me twice. Um, one was in uh, Cheeseman Park, and the other was in Galveston. In Galveston. Oh, Galveston. What town? <laughs> Galveston is, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the most haunted towns in the nation, um, you know, next to so New Orleans. Death, so much death. And um, Galveston, uh, Galveston I, I had a ghost attached to me all night long, and um, it really freaked me out. Um, I was freaked out why it was happening, um, but I realized later that it was trying to – Show me how it felt. Uh, let's give the, a quick backstory f of what Galveston is all about. In 1900, there was a huge, huge hurricane in Galveston. It is the most deadly hurricane there ever there ever was. They're still counting. counting. They're still counting the dead to this day. 1900, and um, you know the reason they're still counting the dead is that we have databases now, and so they go through documentation of missing people that never showed up. 
There's one. Yeah, There's so they're two. They're thinking 12,000 or more died in the storm where the island was completely washed away in the hurricane. Oh. People's homes, people. And the only thing that was really left standing on the on the island were the concrete buildings. The tall so if you had a three or four story concrete building, those buildings were the survivors. So when you go to the town now, you'll see those buildings still standing and they have historical plaques on it saying 1900 storm survivor. Okay. So those buildings that did survive and are still there today, a lot of them are hotels and stuff. And yeah, yeah. during the storm, they were literally stacking the bodies in these hotels. So a body with, I mean, the so, so, storm surge was so high. Yeah, they were second or third floor. Somebody had flown by, they drag them in the window. You know, dead or thing. alive. You know, and there's only like five or six of these buildings that are left on Galveston Island. There's actually, there's more than that. There, yeah. there is more. Yeah. That you know, survived it. So, and the whole island has a dark history dating back to piracy. Uh, yeah, this John Lafitte, he, he came into that area and uh, uh, conquered the natives that lived there, enslaved the women and children, and murdered all the men. So, he raped his pirate base out of Galveston, and the locals were his slaves. Uh, Civil War battles in the streets, lots of death there. And then roll around to the 1900 hurricane. Uh, there's a lot of death, doom, and destruction in that town. So, uh, so after the hurricane, everything was destroyed except these concrete buildings. And uh, so they had to collect the dead. I'm actually hearing something in the background. A bus? Oh, it stopped. We don't have anything on. I got Literally, I'm not thinking of your videos, quite honestly. I got cricket. I'm sorry. Pardon me. There were, there were, I don't know, you guys in the chat, did you hear that too? It quit now that I brought it up, but it almost sounded like a, like in your video, it was like, like an electronic-ish kind of sound. I don't know how to describe it. I guess yeah, we did, and we're not getting it on our end. It's a disembodied voice. Yeah, I guess I'm being attached right now. <laughs> no, really, it was like a staticky kind of sound. Yeah, see, people are saying they did hear it, and then as soon as I asked you about it, it stopped. I we we didn't hear a thing. No, all we have were the thing. crickets outside. Yeah, there's not a thing going on over here. No, <laughs> I, do, I, yeah, we don't have anything in the house. I can actually sense it. Sure, we it. don't. We never do any investigation. Yeah, <laughs> but anyways, the Galveston thing. Um, so I, I found out that my great great grandparents were in the storm and survived. And the deluge. The deluge. And um and so I had to go down there. I mean, I, I had to once I found out that I had family members that survived this horrible storm. And um so we stayed in a hotel called the Tremont, and which was awesome place, by the way. Which is not only one of the surviving buildings, but it's two of the surviving buildings that have been brought together. Okay. And so we were in the top floor um, and um, we had a suite and um, we, it turned out that the suite that uh, the, uh, the people who we did the, that bought the hotel and we did it died in this room, but we didn't know it, that. It, at the it time. was their private suite. It was a private suite, but nice we didn't, place, by the way. but we didn't know that at the time. So anyways, you matter of fact, we've got two videos out on it. One's an older video that tells the story and shows Thomas Edison footage of the wreckage and everything. And we talk about what the story is and we show you some of the stuff and, and what happened to me there. And then we did one back in June where we kind of talk about it again. Anyways, um, um, so in the first video, you, sh you see us, we're happy, go lucky. We're having fun to kind of phone around the hotel and, um, you know, I'm in a good mood. Everything's great. Mm -hmm. And about nine o'clock that night, all of a sudden, just this dread came over me. Yeah, I we're mean, thinking it had something to do with dread. the thunderstorm that rolled in. Yeah. This horrible, you know, one of those Gulf thunderstorms rolled yeah, in. Poor oh, around, that energy. Right? And that stirs things us uh, well not only that but up. i imagine the conditions were similar to the hurricane coming on shore as well exactly and so it's raining cats and dogs right when the storm started i started feeling this just dread i mean sadness and dread and like one of my children had just died or you know it was that it was just horrible dread okay and um i mean 
I don't know, the kind of dread that you would have when you know you're going to be, you know, you're in a bad situation and you know it's not going to turn out well, that kind of dread. And impending doom. Impending doom type dread. It was it's a feeling I had never had in my life. And um, it lasted all night long. And I couldn't. I couldn't sleep. I just, I, I was just the whole night. It was just, it was horrible. And, um, I, I could tell something was like, had detached onto me. And so he, um, he went into the, he went into the living room to sleep because the I, ghost was keeping me away, keeping him up all night long. So I finally fell asleep right before the sun came up. And then about a couple hours later, um, something woke me up about 530, 6 o'clock in the morning. Something was shuffling around in the living room. So I thought it was him. Uh -huh. I shuffled a lot, especially and, in the living room. And so I really didn't get up and investigate. I just figured it was him because I knew he moved into the other room. And I still felt the dread at that point. And so I could hear the shuffling and I could hear somebody walking in the foyer um and there was another bathroom out there so i just thought it was him walking in the foyer going into the bathroom and then i heard the doorknob move on the front door and then nothing and then the dread just left right at that point just was it's gone detached night and day and so i got up Karma left the room. I go, I get up, I look to the left and I look at the door to see and open up the door to see, you know, catch Patrick. I think it's Patrick leaving and to go mm -hmm. catch him. Cute. And there's nobody there. I mean, I literally got to bed right away. And I turn around, I shut the door, I turn around and he's fast asleep snoring. <laughs> and Mr. Martini has no problem sleeping in haunted On places. the couch. <laughs> you know, my grandma believed in the paranormal. She and, um, one of my aunties, my great aunts, they had made this deal that whoever passed first would give the other a sign. And so they had one of those chains on the doors. If someone opened it, it sets an alarm off. And so grandma said one night it started going off. And she said, it's all right, Beatrice. I know. I hear you. And then it stopped. And there was nobody else there. Right. And my grandpa was, he absolutely did not believe in any of this. Not at all. But the... This one night, Grandpa thought he saw Grandma walking down the hall because they had separate rooms. But he, he called out to her, and she wasn't wearing her pajamas because they it was everything was so light. Mm -hmm. And um, he could have swore he saw her. And then they found out that was around the same time that my great grandma passed. I was like, <laughs> really? And my grandpa was not a believer. He wasn't. It was just that, came to check on everybody. Th there's I a left. lot of there's a lot of people that aren't, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I you know, to us, this is all about proving to ourselves that these things that are happening to us that there's oh, you know, yeah, I'm not out there. to convert anybody. Yeah, I'm not out to convert anybody. <laughs> and and oh, no, but I just find it interesting. Where even like like you said before, like you have to experience something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You do. I, I do. You have I to think experience it. Different. Helps. You know, I, the one thing I can say to people that don't believe in it is, you know, buy one of these pieces of equipment or go with some people and and see what you think, you know, mm -hmm. and, and go to some place that you know is haunted or is claimed to be haunted and see if, if there's something happens that you just can't explain. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I became a true believer I've actually kind of gone back and forth since we started ghost hunting. I actually kind of at a point there was going, all right, can I explain all these, these things are happening, you know, and then something just extraordinary happens. You're like, okay, I'm back. <laughs> Jane shows up. Yeah. I can't explain that. <laughs> you know, my brother commented on here earlier. He asked me to, to tell you about my dad's urn. So I have my dad's ashes and I had it on the China cabinet right on the very top and it was fine for years and years and then like all of a sudden it's all cracking and falling apart like it was 
was, and very quickly, like it was a matter of a couple of days. We don't know what that was, poor quality of an urn. I don't know, but the, like, we don't have earthquakes. We don't have any of those kinds of things. And it was like, well, if there's some message trying to get across, I don't know well, what. Let me is. out. Right. right. <laughs> well, let me ask well, you this. You know what you you mean, yeah. You you have have they, they, cra the they cracked car. that shit. Glued it back together, dust busted. Uh, <laughs> I wrapped back. him in duct tape. I'm not kidding. I like. I know he his ashes spread, but I just I can't do it. Yeah, that means and spread them. You know, maybe out. that is. Yeah, let, let me out. out. Maybe somebody has spread his ashes. You know. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 because I believe so much. I. When my we cremated my mother, I didn't want to keep her ashes. I wanted to spread her ashes. Yes, yeah, so I left her in a bar in Vegas. <laughs> you <laughs> forgot. Remember it all? <laughs> no, no, she's we spread her ashes in the ocean. <laughs> my Aww. mom is very close. <laughs> no. no, we were driving back to California to spread her ashes, and I was carrying her ashes around everywhere, and I went into a bar in Vegas. <laughs> and I'm sitting at the bar drinking and, and the family comes in. Okay, let's go. And I got up and left grandma in the chair next to me. <laughs> my, my daughter, my daughter caught it before we got too far. My, my mom would have approved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she didn't have a drink in front of her. So yeah, you know, so a lot of the paranormal is, is because we do so much history, we really get into the history and we do a lot of debunking because we walk into places and they have these extraordinary stories and we're like, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> and so we kind of go out to not really disprove the places stories, but we want the real, we want the real story. <laughs> and if something doesn't make sense to us, we're not going to say, you know, Oh, we hear Fred's here. So Fred, are you here? You know, and Elvis is haunting my motel. Would he ever sleep there? No. You, know. you ever visit there? No. Why the hell would he be at your hotel? I mean, no. you know, there's so many, you know, have you ever noticed that there's always a woman in white, and she's always a bride. There's always We're a the, virgin. Yeah. You know. There's always the woman in black, Go and figure. she was the evil witch of the town. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. there's the woman in the dad who's always the prostitute. She was, she was the hussy. You know, the hussy. <laughs> and it's like I hear those stories. I'm like, yeah, right. over and over again. <laughs> it's I like, bet, yeah. Here? You're probably haunted, but you know, I don't think it's Elvis. It's like the woman in white. It's like, <laughs> you know, oh, she's a ghost. Of course, she's white. <laughs> She's still wearing a dress. She's got a sheet over her head. You know what? One of the things I found really interesting was watching you guys do filming with the heat sensors. Or oh, yeah. the thermal. What do you call that? A, ther a thermal. Thermal. Um, the thermal imaging? Imaging. Yeah. So, so it, it basically it picks up the different temperatures of, of objects in the room. Mm -hmm. So the redder something is or the blue. Yeah, it, it's great for finding cold spots. Uh, because it, it it's, gives you a thermal image of everything in the room. It's quite awesome. If you're out in an area where there's no heat, uh, let's say you're out in a field in the middle of winter, okay, scanning the field, anything with a heat signature that crosses that field like a squirrel, it shows right up. It's amazing. Really? Um, yeah. yeah it, it's really cool. A, a you lot can literally, I can literally put my... If I got up right now and we put the camera, we on could it, scan a chair and it would show the impression of her butt. Uh, yeah, my whole body would would show up in the in the chair. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's pretty it's very sensitive. So when we were at the Plains Hotel in Cheyenne, Wyoming, that's those two videos. Um, we confirmed that James was also a cold spot. Yeah, James, he told us he hung he hangs out in the bathroom. So if you ever go and you get that room, you know, and you go in there and you're going potty, you're not alone. <laughs> well, I know that you pointed out too, like there's a really big cold spot in your imaging, but you guys put on the video, that's the toilet, right? So that nobody would mistake that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Inaccurate information. We were at that room had no, no um, vents. And it was an interior room. So it only had one exterior wall. And so the, it had the two windows, which were to the left of me. And, and boy, they show up. I and mean. that's where the, um, air conditioning and the heater are and um you know and they weren't on no it was a true cold spot and it was so awesome. on this side of me was the bathroom 
And so I'm sitting there talking to James on the on the K2 and the spirit box. And all of a sudden on that thermal, you see this billow of cold come to my feet. Right at the K2. And go up to the K2. Yeah. It, you know, where it was answering the questions. And, and that's freaky, too, because I don't see this. He sees it on the camera standing in front of me. And he's like, there's like this billowing cold coming. Yeah, I watched. I basically watched it build on the camera. It was and cool. I'm like, well, look, we're you're sitting are? under the end table there for a while, right? If we're talking about the same video, like it looked like, yeah, it was almost like it was nervous. Yeah, and it and then it would go away and then billow back. It was it was I can't explain it because there was nothing there to cause anything that because if you're gonna pick what? up something billowing, yeah, it's gonna be you know a vent or something. There's there were no vents. There was not from the direction it was coming from. There was nothing there. There was no door that where it could be coming out from underneath the door. There was nothing there. Well, what's amazing is we from. have the before and after where it was warm and then there's a cold spot. And you've got three separate instruments showing that something's there. I'm getting thermal imaging. I'm getting hits on my K2. And I'm getting intelligent responses on our um, um, uh, ghost box and the spirit box, the ghost box. Mm -hmm. So we have three different instruments all there communicating intelligently with the spirit. That one for me was a no-brainer. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that that's a haunting. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the other places I go, I'm a little more uh, difficult to convince. Yeah, things have been kind of quiet lately when we go so, out. I think they're afraid of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Damn ghosts, they already have to wear a sheet. Now you want to put a mask on top of it? What the hell? Uh, Tipsy Gypsy asks, are you guys going to Quartzsite this year? Us? Yeah. We don't have, we don't have our trailer ready. Love Quartzsite though. Yeah, but we we love Quartzsite. Um but no we're, Party we're in not. the middle of the desert. Yeah. <laughs> We've been actually staying in KOA ca uh, cabins since we got rid of our trailer um, yeah. until okay. we get it until we get the new one and stuff. So so yeah, we're just in between trailers. Yeah, we're going to wait and see if we, if we end up, you know, having to live in a trailer so <laughs> going to take it hey, in. And if you buy new, you won't have to worry. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's Adventure on Wheels asks, um, do you, like, do you know about this drive-in movie motel near Alamosa? That has been on my list. Haven't made it there yet. We've been to Alamosa a few times. Yeah. Got a great alligator farm there. Yeah. We have a video on that, the alligator <laughs> farm, in the middle of Colorado. In the middle of Colorado, <laughs> we've got gators. And you know who's there? Remember the gator that took Chubb's arm in Happy Gilmore? <laughs> oh, I remember that. That gator. Yeah, that Hollywood is gator is there. <laughs> He's got both eyes, though. It's all celebrity status. He's yeah, got a celebrity status, and he's yeah. huge. What it's, it's fun to go at feeding time. I can't remember his name, but yeah, yeah, we did a whole video on that back in December. And but yeah, this drive in, you can literally like be in your room and watch the drive in from your room and stuff. And we were going to go there one time and we canceled something happened that we, we had to cancel for some reason. Remember, we were going to go down there. I can't remember what it was, but yeah, we, we, I haven't we it's on the bucket list. It's on the bucket list. So yeah. it's not that far from us. No. So I got a question. Can you write off your hotel expense? Because you oh, have to. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's best if you treat your YouTube channel as a small business, uh, register yourself as an LLC or LLP or corporation, whatever works best for you. Because it's different in every state. So yeah. we're an LLC. We have been since day one. We're a publishing one. company. Yeah, we're a publishing company and we write off everything. Our mileage, our hotels, our... All our Maseratis, um, <laughs> all kinds of cool shit. Um, you know, it's, you know, everything, um, you know, within reason and our equipment. Part of your house, your utilities, yeah. your typical IRS deductions. Your home um, yes. It'll actually help you keep some of the money in your pocket. Yeah. So that's, that's one of the biggest gains from your YouTube channel is mm -hmm. your tax write-offs. Um, we even write can, off the, the ghost our, hunting. Equipment. I mean, our phone bills. <laughs> Uh, for our mobiles, um, mm. as much as you can, as long as you're turning a profit, some type of money's coming in. Uh, if, 
IRS won't ask too many questions, but yeah. I have an app on my phone I recommend. It's called, uh, it's QuickBooks, but it's uh, for small businesses. And oh, so when, yeah. because I'm out and about traveling and I'm trying to film and stuff, I, you know, trying to collect receipts and stuff is just a hassle. So you mm -hmm. can like take pictures of your receipt. It scans it right there on your phone. Put in the record of what it is, you know, what it's a write-off for, you know, a travel expense and, uh, you know, so-and-so hotel was this amount. It even reads your receipt for yeah. you. Um, really? And you put in all your mileage in there because you write off your mileage. And um, you'd go as far as to lease a car in your business if that's what you wanted to do. Right. Um, so, you know, yeah, you should absolutely, you know, if you're in this for the long haul, you should make it a business. Um, you know, write off your business cards, write off everything. And, you know, within reason. Mm -hmm. And um, until you start making money. Um, and if you don't turn a profit in about three to five years, you need to shut it down and open up another one because otherwise the IRS is going to declare that you're just supporting your hobby, right. not a business. But you didn't hear that from us. Yeah, businesses make <laughs> money. You know, if, if you're just writing all your shit off and you're not uh, you're not making any money, you can get away with it for, more, for a while. But after a while, you got to show profit or at least money coming in. Uh, to your business, you and can't, when, everything can't be a write-off, and nothing's coming in. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. red flag. Right. So, so you know, be, so be on the cool side when you first start out, you know, and then you keep can it on the down low, on the down low and stuff, you know, on on how much you're you're writing off. But you know, you can also, you know, there's a reason why we are we're in suites at hotels. It's not because we paid for them. Um, we tell people we're coming. Yeah, the the perks are also a big benefit of YouTube. So, so we you're going to review the hotel. Uh, usually they'll take good care of you. They'll upgrade you. Um, oh. you know, when we go to the Lodge Hotel in, in uh, Deadwood, I'll let them know I'm coming. I'm a YouTuber. I'd like to review your hotel. Um, you know, I just wanted to let you know that we were coming. Do I have permission, you know, to, to film? And then you show up and they, they'll upgrade you into a nice suite or a nicer room. Um, well, you know, or they'll... If it's a casino, they'll you know give you gambling. Yeah, they gave me money, money last they time. They gave us gambling money. Slot machine, <laughs> but, yeah, I just gave us dollars. <laughs> you felt too guilty to keep it, right? Well, you know, I won twenty seven hundred dollars that night, but it only took me four grand to do it. So <laughs> we were in pretty bad shape. You know, you get emails all the time from people asking you to review stuff. You know, that the more you're into this, you'll you'll start getting emails. And um, you know, and there's no difference between those products and a hotel and you know, or a restaurant or something. And so yes, you rather than getting the bracelets from, you know, somewhere and, and showing them and opening them, we just take it out on the hotels. Right. Yeah. You know, so our reviews are usually, you know, hotel wise and stuff. And, and we're not really one to give a bad review. If we have a bad experience, we just won't mention them at all. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Why be a hater? Sometimes I'll, <laughs> sometimes I'll video it and get it out because <laughs> I'll be mad about something, but then I'll never post it. <laughs> That's like writing an angry letter that you never yeah. send. Well, the people who piss me off out there, watch out. I got we video. Got, we got the video. Just we just haven't put it out. out. <laughs> oh, boy. I better be careful. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, you so know, what are your plans, you, are your I mean, plans now? Well, you crash an establishment, next thing you know, all their employees are giving your video stuff. They're down. giving you thumbs down. You know? I mean, seriously. <laughs> really? No, we, were, we were on YouTube last night. What was it about? How bad we sucked. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that. No, that's Actually, true. That's true. That happened to us. I, we didn't put it in the video, but it was in Galveston. Um, on our way back, we stayed in a different hotel and had a horrible experience. It was awful. Yeah, um, it went from like a five star to maybe a half star. To this just, it just, it, it was just horrible. And because so, they had this like machine that you couldn't sleep. Oh, well, they put us across the hall from the washer from and the dryer. Washer and dryer, and it was <laughs> for, like for, for housekeeping. <laughs> it was broken, and so it was like. <laughs> And so we complained and we were really upset and they knew we were there with, they knew we were Colorado Martini. They knew we were there to review them. And it was like, this isn't going well, people. Yeah, I mean, we weren't <laughs> looking for special treatment. We just wanted to be treated like customers. Damn. You know? and, and 
And so they um, they comped us some money back. No, they didn't. They said they would. No, they, they did. Gave it they to. did. And then they took it away, <laughs> which really pissed me off. <laughs> oh. So when I got, it, it was credited. And then I got home and it was taken away. And I was like, <laughs> we won't mention your name. What was your name again? <laughs> and so I called and complained and I made a big huff about it. And uh, next thing I knew, I had like 10 thumbs down on the video I put out on Galveston. <laughs> and uh -huh. I never did them. <laughs> It was because of the timing. And we didn't know? even bash them. <laughs> yeah. We didn't even bash them. So we got them. all the reward of it. See, that's why you don't call people and complain. <laughs> or say you are. To secretly <laughs> TP their house. <laughs> so, yes, absolutely, 100%, you should treat this as a business. Mm -hmm. You should, depending on your state, in our state, it was best for us to be a sole proportionship LLC. Um, yeah, so she's the owner. I'm the owner. And so, so I make her do all the work. And the only reason that we're a sole proprietorship is that if we're a partnership, um, then I have to do all these like minutes and reports at the end of the if year. If you're not careful, <laughs> you'll have to carry uh, workman's comp. Yeah, yeah. That would be an employer. Yeah. Um, and so, um, so you in know, our so state, you can have a business. And if you don't have any employees, you don't have to carry workman's comp. Right. Well, that's so, uh, different. So you just have to figure out what's best for you. That make me a volunteer. <laughs> You're a volunteer, baby. And um, and you want a federal <laughs> ID. You want to get a federal ID, and um, you know which is equivalent to a social security number for a business. Um, Your bank account. And then um, and then to be, be a, a, a real home in Colorado to be a, a true home business. For me to write off my office, the actual square footage of my office, um, I have a business license in in the town we're in. Um, okay. So you look more legit when you get all these things to the, the IRS. I mean, we are legit, um, but these are the things that they want to see because mm -hmm. if it's a hobby, you're not going to do all this stuff. And um, yeah, that, that keeps somebody from going out and going, I want to be a captain right. and buying a boat and writing everything off. And most importantly, you're, you're, you could be sued. You know, we're filming the public. And, um, you know, you, you can film people when you're in the public. If you're in the public and somebody Steer walks away past, from those little kids. Yeah. Though. And somebody mm -hmm. walks across your camera, um, you're not liable for that because it's in the okay. public public event, um, you know, if it's a festival and stuff like that, you know, you try to avoid it, but you don't have to get their permission. But if you're interviewing somebody or you're on a ghost hunt, you know, and people are, you know, we have people sign releases, their boilerplate re releases all over the internet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so I have them sign a release and, um, and but being a business and, and being incorporated, uh, you're if you are sued for some silly reason, they're only able to get the assets of your business. They can't go after you personally. You're not going to lose your house. You're not going to lose your car. Uh, you might have to sell your camera to pay off debt, but you know it, there's nothing there. Um, okay. Mild liability, you may want to carry insurance, but not the type of stuff that we do. It's just to protect, you know, not that anything will ever happen. Protect it's your just, assets. It your just assets protects away. yourself um, by you know, cover your own ass at all times, right? Assets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but and because we go to a lot of businesses and we talk to their employees, you know, with their own camera and stuff, um, that's why we take that extra step because we, you know, and it, mm -hmm. it doesn't, and you can write any fees that they charge that, you know, or, licensing or, fees. You that can goes off, on your taxes as you well. You can write all that off too. Um, you know, those are very legitimate write-offs. Um, your yeah. website, you know, what it costs to get your website and stuff. That's all right. You can write off all that. Everything that has anything to do with what you're doing. Right. So, you know. So you need to be monetized. If you require right? a special wardrobe, you could write that off. Uh, if it needs to be cleaned weekly, you can write that off. Uh, but again, within reason. Otherwise, Only uniform. Yeah. Plus, if you require oh, yeah. special clothing. Oh, uh, we've been a business since day one. We didn't wait until we were monetized. 
Yeah, we've had many businesses. So. Yeah, so we, it's oh, just okay. because we're experienced in business. We've had other businesses. And so it, it was kind of a no brainer for us because we just kind of knew what to do. Um, you know, but somebody's just starting out, they, um, you know, they don't know what to do. And, um, you know, so what we did, because I wasn't 100% sure about the Colorado laws that the small business association in your area have free classes for you to take. That yeah, those were exciting. Yeah, <laughs> those boring classes. Very informative. Though. But, you know, after work one night, they'll have a class where they'll teach you what the laws are in your state and what's available. I got some really nice support on this channel. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, so, I mean, especially when you're first getting started, um, being a business, your write-offs are your biggest, biggest, biggest benefit. I mean, it really is mm -hmm. because it's something you can see immediately. Uh, there's still four months left in this year. No, maybe. Uh, yeah, so think about it. You're not making any money. You're not monetized. And so the IRS knows you're a new business. Okay. It takes a normal business, takes about five years before they see a profit. Oh. And, um, you know, it, it takes a while for a business to turn around, whether it's a restaurant or anything else, if it makes money, you know, makes a profit before that, great. But mm -hmm. the average business, it takes five years for them to really solidly be on their feet. And the IRS knows that. And so the first two years of your business, they know you're going to be operating as at a loss. So you can get away with a lot of shit. Yeah, you know, no. <laughs> Well, that's interesting because last year with my income tax was my first year that I couldn't claim my son. So that made a huge difference for me. This could make it up to you. Yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah. No, that's really interesting. But I'm Canadian. So, I mean, there's a little bit of differences. But I think we have 1500 to become incorporated. Something like what that. Do you to be an incorporated business with your own GST number, that's our tax, one of our taxes. Right. It, it costs, I'll, I'll look more into it. Did any of that setting up the business cost you money? Like, yeah, it's not a whole lot though. In the US, I mean, business licenses aren't very expensive. Well, it, it depends on what city, town, or county and state you're in. Um, here in Colorado, it's not expensive. California, it's expensive. So to, oh, to have an LLC here, which is like one step down from a corporation, um, and you I have one employee, me. Um, oh, hell, the chief. <laughs> um, it costs me fifty dollars a route to get a license to get a state license, and then it's ten dollars to renew it every year. And I just have. And to you write that, and you write that off on your taxes every year, so it. it it, it doesn't yeah, matter if it's a thousand dollars. It's worth it. You're going to turn around to get it back at the end of the year. And then um, to get your in here in the United oh. States to get your federal IDs free, you just have to fill out the paperwork. So you get your federal ID here in the United States. You get your federal ID first, and that's free. Then you go to the state level, get your get your paperwork with them. Every state costs different, and it depends on whether it's a sole proprietorship, an LLC, a corporation. So a corporation is more expensive. Yeah, because each each entitlement gives you different protection. So it also okay. has different requirements, like corporations your uh, has the most requirements. And then uh, every city is different. So if you're living in, in a county land, you're not in the city or the town, um, you don't have to get a business license. If you're within the city limits, uh, or town limit, uh, you have you don't have to get a business license. You only have to get a business license in your city if you're taking in sales tax. I got a business license because I could claim my home business through the city here. It's just the way the city works here. Mm -hmm. And um, so I got a business license in our city here um, just so I could say this is a home business. So I had it on paper, official, that this is a home-based business, so I could write off my ten by ten office space. office space. So you, so oh, let's say, let's say ten, the ten by ten of your office space is ten percent of your house, like this, the square footage is ten percent. That's of your square it is for me, so that's perfect. <laughs> but you can write off ten percent 
of that office, the utilities, 10% off your utilities in the house, your, you know, all your utilities, even your trash, internet, pretty much everything, your internet, 10% if it's 10% of the square footage. So if it's 20% of the square footage and it has to be a hundred percent for that business, yeah, then you yeah. can write off 20% of all those things off your taxes. So, but it is different, especially uh, internationally. Yeah. So. I, I have no idea with Canada. Uh, I think yeah. my best bet would be talking to an accountant that deals with small businesses. Yeah. But, or, or research it on your own. We're big about doing that. Yeah. You know? yeah. Anybody, I have a personal friend that's an accountant, so I think I'll be giving her a call this weekend. Yeah. 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 And that, that self, um, um, what's it called? Uh, um, it's this app is wonderful. Self-employed, um, a phone app by, uh, QuickBooks. Okay. Um, is absolutely wonderful. I, I get income. I put it in there. I put my mileage in, I snap the, a gas receipt and it literally reads the gas receipt and puts the numbers and all the information in for me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, does it also document what it's scanned so like if you were ever audited you actually have that information or do you still yeah. it scans it in it's, okay i've got the receipt and then i can just crumple up the receipt and i've got the scan version in the of the database it. yeah so it's pretty cool wow my goodness what don't you know <laughs> a lot of <laughs> yeah, you, 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 know, you know, if you knew our kids, you would think we know nothing. That's supposed to be. freaking know everything. <laughs> and how old are your kids? They're in their twenties. <laughs> oh yeah, wait till they hit thirties and forties. They'll definitely see you differently. <laughs> yeah, I'm a lot of them. To hear about it <laughs> i keep going yeah wait until you have kids it doesn't matter if you're right if you're dead and don't know it right <laughs> <laughs> well you never know <laughs> that's true you have to break out to k2 to find out though yeah oh my goodness oh my goodness uh, you know if it's like you know honey can you empty the dishwasher for me please i'm really busy leave me alone i'm tired <laughs> and then two hours later mommy can i have twenty dollars to go get some boba <laughs> all of a sudden i'm mommy <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> honey i'm a shark <laughs> So, anyways, <laughs> we have a comment here because some people that watch this channel, they're full time nomads, so they live in their RVs or right, right, and stuff. So, Aaron says, in an RV, ten by ten square foot is like half of his camper. <laughs> Might pay off his camper quicker. Hey, the camper actually ten by ten, so hundred square feet is. Yeah, to be honest with you, you could probably ride off the whole damn RV. Because it's your equipment. <laughs> and if you're a small business, you could probably purchase the damn thing with a low interest uh, uh, business loan from the government. Uh, they do farmers trucks. They do farmers equipment um, when they do uh, the small business uh, vehicles. And they do it uh, every few years. Uh, it allows farmers to buy new equipment at a, at a reduced uh, uh, rate. But a lot of people have small businesses would buy pickups, SUVs, things of that mm -hmm. nature. And again, it's, it's not illegal. It's just another way of manipulating the laws that are there. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, if you can lease a car, if you're using the car for your business, um, why can't you ride off your RV? I mm -hmm. talked to my accountant. Business cards, everything. Even that we just got this with a reason. Like my magnets? Yeah, these are magnets for the car. Nice. That's not a bad guy at all. <laughs> you know, magnets, that's brilliant because myself. So there's sometimes I want to promote who I am, and there's other times I want to keep it on the down low. I yeah, so you can that. peel them off. They go great on the uh, least Ferrari we've got. There's there's two things. There's two uh, there's um two things I attribute our our subscribers to. Okay. Community is everything. A really tight net community and getting to know your viewers and you know being friends and and just really building friendships with your community um to me community is everything when it comes to youtube and i attribute that to all our wonderful subscribers that you know over the years 
Secondly, everywhere we go, we pass out business cards. You know, go to Vista Print. Like right now, Vista Print I think's hurting, and everything's like fifty percent off. I got that for twenty two of these for twenty seven bucks. <laughs> Those are magnetic, and you got them for that much? They're having like major sales right now. Oh, I gotta write this down as a number. I don't <laughs> got forget. one for each door too. Yeah, it's Vista Print. Yeah, it's just this. There's there's one for each side. So, and they're they're actually you know Vista Print's done really well. Everything I've ever gotten from them. Oh, even from here, your picture came through beautifully. Yeah, it's wow. It, it turned out really well. So. Um, Vista, so we've got this, we get business cards and we do both sides. You can get like 500 for like 20 bucks. Okay. They're worth their mm -hmm. weight in gold. We've got all our social media icons on there. We've got, um, you know, who we are, what we do, you know, our tagline, you know, of travel, adventure, exploring, um, you know, um, we've got our, our logo, which is us. And, um, what else do we have? Oh, we got our, we've got our PO box on there, our email address, our blog, everything. You know, you've got two sides to work with. And we pass okay. those out to everybody. We're having a drink at a bar. We get we make friends with the bartender. He gets a card. Well, the I usually I usually have to tell him how to make the drink. So. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere we go, we do events. Um, we help with events. So like a paranormal, like we were talking about this group, paranormal events, we'll help the people that put them on. So we speak at them. And so I'll get up and speak and, you know, teach them how to put together a, a SLS camera because I actually built my own and or talk about equipment or whatever. And the, we've got 40 people in the audience that have heard me speak. And believe me, everyone is going to get a, a card. Yeah. And, you know, and then I'll get all, the next day, I'll have, you know, 30 new subscribers. Nice. You know, so interacting with people, with everybody you come across. I mean, I'm on a bike trail <laughs> and we're talking to people, you know. Oh, here we're YouTubers, you know. Yeah. So we, you know, we, we give it and we've done it for two and a half years, just giving out our card and speaking at events and doing events. And, um, and that's how we contribute our 6,800 subs. Um, yeah. I'm seeing some comments here. There's a really good idea too. And I actually do that with work. Um, at work, my business cards, because I work with people that tend to lose things. Um, my business cards and stuff are magnetic for work. So uh, people tend to keep those. And I honestly, like in the van life kind of circle, a lot of sticker trading. And I think a magnetic logo might be just just as good. It, it Yeah. You know, I saw another YouTuber do this with the magnetic signs. And so like every, and he was doing outdoor stuff. And so every place he goes, when he parks his car, he's got the, the magnets on there. So he's out hiking and his said, mm -hmm. like, his, his said, uh, you know, so-and-so is here hiking from, you, you know, filming YouTube. Um, but yeah, you really get to know your community. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like people in our own town. You know, we, we do a lot of car events. And they know our little Sportster BMW. What is it? I you don't see? even know what the hell it is. What do we have? I don't know. Why don't you look up the registration under Colorado Martini? A BMW Sportster. <laughs> She's the business owner. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she's got this little old classic. I, I'm going to continue car. to let her struggle. It's kind of funny, actually. <laughs> So we've got this old uh, sports or car that we take out to car shows and stuff. What kind of cars are these? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and, um, is it a Porsche? And it's neat because people have gotten to know us just doing the car shows. And they all have our business cars where we'll drive down cruising and we'll have people yell out, Colorado Martini! We have fans. Because they, know, they know our car, they know our face because yeah, our face is the icon. And, so we've, and that's why we didn't change our name. Because Colorado Martini became a persona, mm -hmm. and and it people really says a couple of drunks. Doesn't it? <laughs> it says a couple of drunks, and so it it just the name just stuck. And by the time we started doing other things, we that persona was already he was already Mr. Martini, and I was already Colorado. 
And I, it just, you know, it just stuck. And so I decided not to put a venture on it or travel or anything like that um, to yeah. just leave a Colorado martini. And I'm glad I did. Um, you know, they say you should, your name should describe what you want to do, but the problem was that you want to drink in Colorado <laughs> and you're stuck with it. <laughs> True. But you've still managed to find a name that's really catchy and draws attention without it, you know, defining you to one thing too much. Right. Exactly. You know, mm. I, I told somebody the other day, you know, somebody was saying, Oh, you should have done adventures or something at the end. And it's like, well, you know, Omar, gosh, is one of the biggest YouTubers out there and he does adventure and exploring and his name doesn't say what he does, but mm. everybody knows. I mean, his, yeah. his, his name's become such a persona. You don't even have to say the gosh at the end. You just say, Oh, you know, Omar on YouTube, everybody knows who he is, you know, because mm -hmm. he's become such a personality. So um, not that we'd be that I way. It would stick to my ambulance. Cause I it doesn't want to the like exterior is different. What kind of inter exterior is it? I think everything's aluminum, but uh, anything that looks metal inside, it doesn't stick to. So I'll, I'll come up with something though. You guys, oh my goodness, you guys are so full of fantastic information. It's fun. Oh. Oh. You know, it just, it's been a lot of trial and error that's gone on, you know? Yeah. Hey, so I was wondering, uh, do you have a gasoline or a diesel engine in your uh, I have ambulance? A diesel. That's what I thought. It looked pretty heavy, heavy duty. Yeah. So I was watching some of your videos of you uh, restoring it. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness. I, you know what? I need to start doing some more videos because now I actually have editing software and I just got my gimbal. And so some of that old stuff is ridiculously embarrassing, but they stay, you have to start somewhere. You just have to start. And that's what I did. Yeah. So, I mean, when I started, I found, I found them interesting live streams. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, you'll get more equipment as you go, and you know you'll find out what works, what doesn't. And now you know to write it all off. You know, it's like I bought a green screen two years ago, and I've yet to print it out of the box. <laughs> um, <laughs> although we're going to start using it because we're actually starting a podcast. Um, where it's called The Strange by Colorado Martini, and it's going to have a, more of the paranormal and strange stories and some of those great strange history we've come across and um i'm hoping it, it should come out in january if not earlier um but we'll you know we're working on season one right now and uh um we're going to film it also and put it up on youtube um and so i'm going to use the green screen for that so i'm finally going to take it out of the box awesome <laughs> wow you guys out of the box and play with it. yeah <laughs> <laughs> you guys just you try so many different things and it's just, it, it feels like everything about you, no matter what I would watch, will always be fresh, right? So Evergreen is what it's called, if you didn't know. And it is, to me, one of the most important things about being a, a content creator is making sure that your videos are evergreen. They last forever. Don't pigeonhole yourself. Don't pigeonhole yourself. So really what watch you evergreen. So yeah, that's what they call it in advertisement, that something will last forever. So it's not in the moment. So like if you do a video right now on the fires in California, those won't be evergreen because they're about the moment. More of a current event. It's a current event. So you may, you may get popularity now and next week, but two years down the road, nobody's going to care. Uh, it's yeah. dated. It, it's a story that's not in the news. It's, you know. And it's great. To, I mean, I'm not saying don't do them, but the majority of your videos should be evergreen, something that will last forever. People watch so over and over again. Don't okay. save a year. Leave the year out. Leave definitely. the year out. Don't, it, you know, if you put a year in your title, take it out after the year's up. Okay. Um, you know, it's you. So don't say the year. Try not to date in your verbiage what, what's you know what the date is um then you have your seasonal stuff like your halloween stuff and your christmas stuff that's evergreen but just for that season so like right now our our um uh, haunted house uh, we we get asked to come and review a haunted house and film it um every year before everybody else 
Okay. And we've got. That's one of those perks we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's one before. of those perks to get to know your community because then the community starts asking you to do things. Um, those videos every year take off at this time. So, like the one we mm -hmm. did last year, it's getting 150 to 200 views a, um, every 48 hours right now. And that will just go up. Halloween's a great season to take advantage of. Uh, okay. Make your seasonal videos, uh, your Halloween videos. People start watching them in September. And then every year they, they cycle. So I really watch what I put out by the time of year. So if you look at our catalog, you'll notice the last paranormal video I put out was like the beginning of June. And then there's no paranormal. Because why would I spend my time doing paranormal when everybody's out camping? Everybody wants to see travel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Patriotism, uh, 4th of July, fireworks, all that good stuff. You know. Uh, oh, you have so many excellent points. Um, so you have to, you know, really be conscious about what time of year it is. So, like, I'm not going to put out my dog sledding video in July, you know. But yeah. in, uh, when, some, when winter comes around, that video is going to be very hot. Our, one of my Rocky Mountain um, National Park videos did really well this summer. That video is a year and a half old. And and it, it like, went through the roof this summer. So by not dating your information, by not putting things in there that really tie it to a particular event, every year your viewership on that seasonal video will pick up again. And that's what we mean by evergreen. Uh, it's not an annual or a perennial. It's evergreen. It lasts. Okay, that's a great way to remember that. So, you know, it, and then I, sometimes I pull, um, I unlist videos that are seasonal. So, like, I uh, because Christmas, the last two weeks in Christmas can be really slow on YouTube because nobody's watching. Everybody's with their families. Okay. So I do, I've done Christmas music, but I pull it down and unlist it. In, and I'll put it back out in November. So it gets redished out to everybody. Everybody gets alerts about it. Mm -hmm. Fresh two-year-old video. And it's a fresh <laughs> two-year-old video. So it's yeah. still in my account. It's still, you know, it's still in my video catalog, but nobody can see it until I unlist and make it public again. And then once I make it public, everybody gets a notification. See, and here Linda Barker has a really good point, and I've heard this before, where live streams really have no shelf life, right? Especially the longer that they are. Mm -hmm. so, and I've been doing a lot of live streams, but at the same time, I'm doing it because it interests me. Anyone that I ask, it's because there's stuff I want to learn from them, right? Right. But, I, mean, I, I don't know how to right. turn this into something that's going to last longer. Right. And you, they'll bring in your audience. Um, they'll make them interact with you. Yeah. And you, uh, and you're trying to get your hours right now. I mean, like mm -hmm. that live stream I told you was yeah. really popular. The founding fathers, the blog is doing great, but nobody's watching the live stream. And yeah. I have to re dish it out into social media to, to say, Hey, come I watch mean, this. I mean, know? face it, you look at a live stream and it's uh, a year or two old. You really don't want to watch it. Right. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times live streams are dated. Yeah. You know, they're unless all they have somebody famous on there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless it's somebody famous and, mm -hmm. you know, but yeah. So you have to be very conscious of the time of year you're putting things out. I, people think we're all constantly traveling and yeah, we, 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 we do go somewhere every weekend. Yeah, we do travel and we are out and about all the time, but a lot of the footage I'm putting out, I might have filmed a year ago. And I might have gone back to the place and even got more footage. And yeah. so I and I try to mix it up. So I just don't like go to New Mexico and say, here's all of New Mexico in five videos. Boom, 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 boom. I trickle them out and I'll mix them up with Wyoming and I'll mix them up with Montana. People don't want to watch five in a row. So people aren't yeah. my, my regular people aren't like going, oh, my God, if I see one more New Mexico video, you know, <laughs> I'm giving them variety. <laughs> So sometimes mm -hmm. one trip might take me, you know, a year to get all the footage out that I have about it because I'm trickling it in with other videos. I don't want to bore people. Yeah. And, you know, so, you know, sometimes, you know, I'll put something out and it was just a long time ago I was there. <laughs> you know? What do you think about um, 
Like I one day just for the heck of it, I was bored and it was a weekend and I have no social life, but I did a live stream for five hours. And in that there was other creators that popped in there and I was learning such great stuff that I condensed it down five hours to 38 minutes, put it out as a video. I, I think that's a wonderful idea. And I think more people, it, you know, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, that low time when you first start a live and everybody's not in yet and you're kind of waiting for everybody to come in and it's, you know, it's this kind of this trailing, you know, stuff that has nothing to do with the subject matter of the live stream. You're yeah. just kind of waiting time for everybody to come in. You can slice that off after the, the, the live uh, goes up in the YouTube editing tool. And I do that all the time where, you know, it, I slice it off right up to the point where we're starting the action. And we try to kill as much dead time as possible when we make videos. So mm -hmm. only mm -hmm. take the choice content. So, because, you know, you can lose somebody's attention very quickly. So, you know, if you've got a counter like you do in the beginning and, um, like Pusa Studios, Pusa Studios, I don't know if you know them, but they're, uh, they've are they been around for a long time. They We've been friends with them forever. They've been doing lives for, oh, I know, two and a half years now. And they have a good 15 minutes before they even come on. So they're waiting for everybody to come into the live. And everybody's talking in the chat and, and they're playing music and kind of doing a slideshow um, until they come on. Well, you can take all that, you know, prelim stuff and just slice it off and do yeah. it right up where your guests are coming. So that you don't lose anybody. Right. Um, I think it's important. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, to try to bring people in um, to your lives. But yeah, I wouldn't count on your lives being rewatched. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The nature I mean, right of now it's been great for me because as soon as I started doing lives, I went from under 200 to almost nine in right. six, seven weeks. Right. So I'm, I'm meeting people in the community and, and I, you know, it's, it's in times like this, it's quite fun. To be yeah, exactly. We want the connection. You know, yeah. I did a live with um, uh, two other YouTuber friends, uh, a, I don't know, about a year and a half ago. And it was, we were basically talking about our expertise. It was uh, Down the Rabbit Hole Travel, who's a very good friend of mine, and another channel that's not on anymore. And we were trying to explain to everybody, because it was coming around that 365 day and everybody was so confused on yeah. is it rolling is it are we ever going to get monetized so we came on the air to explain it and there was such great conversation it was very educational for a creator to watch and we ended up on for two hours talking about the whole thing and really ed educating people on it i thought that video would be green i thought it would do really well i mean yeah, as a live and after that night, maybe a, for about two weeks, and then nobody's watching it anymore. And that the, yeah. it, the material's still relevant. It's and just how it's being presented. It's how, yeah. It's got a stigma, I think, shelf life. Yeah, the minute they see it, that it's alive, you know. And and I'll tell you one thing too: when you get monetized, YouTube doesn't let you put mid rolls into your lives. And what that is is putting ads in, in your video. Mid mid uh, video commercials, mid roll. So when you get monetized, you can place where you want the videos and oh. what kind of, and what kind of. Ad, I'm sorry, you can place what where you want the ads to be and what kind. Do you want them to be? You know, do you want display ads? Do you want um, you know uh, skippable ads? Do you want non skippable ads? You can do them all. Okay, just can't select the content. You just can't select the content. Oh, okay. So most people put them in the beginning and the end. And, but you can do mid rolls where you can put them in the middle. You can put them in different increments. You get to pick where you can put them. Like every 10 minutes, you can have a, an ad. An ad. Right? Right. It, depending on how long your video is, maybe every 15 minutes. But a lot of people will just do beginning and end. And I've been doing beginning and end for a long time. Those are the ones that get skipped. 
<laughs> but at the beginning, yeah, I don't know of one at the beginning that Three I don't. Seconds. If it's through, I can quickly grab a coffee. But after, you know, let it help Quarantine was really bad for us financially, you know, with when it came to ads and YouTube. And we had ads that sold sold for nothing. I you know, nobody was advertising. It was just nothing. And so mm -hmm. it was like I had to make the conscious decision, something I was against doing mid rolls. I just said I'm not gonna do mid rolls. I it was a decision I made a long time ago. I said, I'm gonna start doing mid rolls and see if that helps. So I did. And my income doubled. But now yeah. you can't do that in a live stream. Does that mean when it's recorded and someone's watching it after the fact, I can't put it in? Yeah, right. you can't put your mid rolls in. You can with a live, a live stream. You'll be able to put. So when this goes to video, when you get monetized, you can come back and put ads on the end, on the beginning and the end. But it, but because it's a live stream, you can't put them in the middle. But if I cut pieces out and edited it and made it a video, you could and re and re and re upload it. Re -upload. Are you editing it in your own editing tool and re and um, re uploading it? I did with one. I've only done it once so far. Because that's what you want to do. If you okay. edit it in YouTube in their editor, then to them it's still live stream. It's no, still reach. No. It's but not through there. Down, you download it edit it on your desktop and upload it as a video, then you'll be able to put a mid, a mid roll in it. Sweet. I think I'm going to make three videos out of your information. Can <laughs> you do that though? Do I'm sorry, I, pardon me? Like, can I even do that? Like, do I need your permission, even though you are in my live stream to turn it into a video? Right. I don't know. No, because when you're interviewing people, you already have consent. Your consent. We're we're sitting well, here. You can we're obviously, consent. you know, we're obviously <laughs> giving you consent by, uh, you know, being here. Okay. Um, you know, and um, you know, that's how interviews usually work. You know, I wouldn't worry about consent when it comes to, you know, unless you know. That what you have to be careful with is that nothing derogatory ha happen or, oh, or yeah. You know, yeah. that you shame this person. You don't want to be slanderous or yeah, you know, things commit like libel that. or and that's the other thing about filming people in public I forgot about. So if you're at a festival and you kept somebody in your video and you it but that you caught something that was very derogatory. Yeah, like they bust their ass on the ice. You better go get a yeah. disclaimer. You know, you caught something that was derogatory and made them look bad, then they can sue you. Okay. Oh so, my goodness. This is non-stop. Unless you go to jail for it. I mean, if you filmed a bank robber, I think you'd get away with it. <laughs> so, you know, whatever that would might be, you know. I oh, wait. What is this? There's this comment of they recorded the interview and you downloaded it and made your right. own. Well, I don't that wouldn't be allowed because now I consent to be on yours and it's your channel, so that's your property now, right? What, my property or your property? Well, it depends. Okay, for for today then. So you've been on my show, which uh -huh. is my property, so I'm okay. But you're not going to take information out of this and make a video. No, I would have to get your permission because this is your content. It's not my content. It's your content. But that's that like, also depends on like if, if, I, if I got interviewed on Good Morning America. I can't download Good Morning America even though it's me. And and use you know use their footage not without their no, permission. No, no permission. Mm -hmm. So let's and they've got money for attorneys. I use other people's footage of you know a lot over time, and I always get like you know, or I ask permission. A lot of times I'll ask permission in a video, so it gets cut out. But, but I you say, have proof. Yeah, I have proof. You know. For, you know, I always say to people, you know, for legal reasons, Hi, you state know, your name. do I have your permission to, <laughs> to videotape you? And, and you have, you have to have them state their full name. So you have oh, to okay. say their first name and their last name. They can't just say, Denise, I give you, you know, I'm, my name's Denise. I give you permission. No, I have to say my full name. And so I have that on video of most people that I, you know, like I'm at a paranormal investigation, you know, give me your permission, give me your permission, give me your permission. And then you crop it out. You know? anyway. And you crop it out, you know, it's not, I don't put it up. 
uh, but I have it in case something happens. Well, that's brilliant because you have evidence of the consent and you're also maintaining their confidentiality of their full name by cropping yes. it. Yeah. Yeah. I would never, never do that and stuff. Um, you you know, need to make some that. videos on this kind of information too. Yeah. I've been thinking about doing that, putting that, uh, putting that out. So, you know, time, <laughs> You know, I, every so often I'll put out a thing called, uh, you know, tech time and I'll put out some information like I did on how to make um, interactive maps. I did one of those recently, um, you know, for the travel, really cool. for the travel community, how you can make your own Google map with the places that you go and how you can actually insert your video. <laughs> so you go to one of our maps and you click on the pen our video comes up you can, that actually, area, you can actually play it and then it gives a little information and then I have links all over to all our stuff in it. And so I did a whole video on how to do that. For, oh, you know, you're track. brilliant. I'm okay. geologically correct. Yeah. And then I have the link to the map in the description of my video um, and on our blog. And so I have like one on Wyoming, one on you know, the Black Hills, depending on how many pins I have in the area is, you know, is how I probably have five different maps going of different places. Yeah, the interactive maps are cool. Yeah. And that you can put your video, actually embed your video on play and the commercials play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's <a big> thing. <laughs> so I think I understand where some of those questions were coming from about with on whose channel not because Aaron Jemison is a creator on YouTube as well. And he's had, um, it happened to him three times where they took the entire video and added their own intro and outro. So he could go after them unless, what is that Creative Commons thing that's on YouTube when we're uploading something? If you have that allowable, then they can, right? Well, Creative Commons um, is, there's different levels. And so you can say, you know, you can't share this in Creative Commons. So just because it's Creative Commons doesn't mean it's shareable. It has okay. to be what level of Creative Commons, like Creative Commons zero, CC zero is public domain, where CC four is no, you can't use this and stuff. So if you actually look in our descriptions and on our channel, I have a statement saying you're not allowed to use my content. And um, and this is without um, my permission, and this is copyrighted. And I had somebody download one of our videos and do all these different languages. They were testing this app, and that, that they wanted me to be involved with, uh, mm -hmm. um, adding different languages. And I was like, "What do you mean you have one of my videos?" <laughs> you know. And, you know, I, I, I didn't get mad, but I had to educate them that you, you just can't go and download somebody's video. It's, you know, they own that. Yeah. Uh, so I turn them in, them in, their videos are removed. Yeah, you can, you can turn them into YouTube. But just like in anything you create, whether it be written, video, podcast, whatever, you, you need to say that it's copyrighted to, okay. have a legal, you know, a, so... I mean, I, I have it in our about, I have it in every description. You know, I do a lot of copy and pasting. I have things all written up, a disclaimer and a copyright thing. And I caught, and I paste that into every video as I go. I put all that in my emails as well. Like I do with work. We mm -hmm. have a confidential confidentiality, confidentiality yeah. statement. Yeah. I even have a clause in there about if I caught you on video, um, I do everything to get your permission. That everybody, everybody in our video is, I've gotten their permission, um, you know. And if you were in my video, you know, it was not intentional, you know. And it, so I, I have a good YouTuber friend that uh, was talking to somebody at one of these paranormal events, and they uploaded the video, and that person got pissed and said, "I didn't give you my permission," but yet he knew he was being interviewed. <laughs> and he knew this person was a YouTuber. And so he was just kind of being a jerk about it. Um, but, you know, you just, somebody you thought you made friends with, <laughs> turns mm -hmm. out that they, you know, they come back at you. So you just, you got to be careful. So cover your assets. Cover your assets, you know, get permission. You know, always get permission. You guys are amazing. And 
Dave is still here. Sorry, the description is like their channel link is in the